Hi, today we're going to take a walk from your school to Tea Ticket Park. The 11 acres that are now a beautiful park used to be a driving range. Golf balls can sometimes be seen along the trail. The Biera family owned the property for 50 years. They wanted it to stay undeveloped and protected as open space. So they sold the land to the 300 committee. Let's go to the park. Starting at the school, we're going to go around the park highlighting different things along the way. Our first couple of stops are in the woods on the way to the park. Then we stop at the outdoor classroom. From here, we head downhill and take a right on the woodland path and go along until we get to the fence next to the marsh. From here, we continue and take a left toward the observation platform. Then we backtrack toward that intersection, but take a left this time toward the picnic grove. From there, we continue to the top of the pollinator meadow. Then we head toward the boardwalk and then to another spot right on the boardwalk. The next stop is just into the woods past that. Then there's one more stop just out the other side of the woods. From there, we head back to the outdoor classroom and then up the path back to the school. As you enter the woods, on the right, there's a grove of pitch pines with their dark gray scaly bark. Another way to identify pitch pines is by their needles. There are three. Down the trail a little bit and still on your right side, there is a grove of white oak trees with their light gray bark. The lobes of their leaves have rounded edges. Poison ivy is growing here too. It can grow as a single stem, a shrub, or a vine. The three leaves start out shiny red in the spring. By summer, they are dull green and will turn a beautiful red, orange, or yellow in the fall. Some of the plants will have small whitish berries in the winter. Be careful not to touch poison ivy because it can give you a red, itchy rash. The saying is, leaves a three, let it be. Here at the outdoor classroom, you can sit and view all of the five habitats of the park. Wetland. Grassland. Streetscape, pollinator meadow, and woodland. At this lower area, you can see a marsh on the other side of a fence and a wide wetland to the left. Trees that can survive having their feet submerged are the red maple and the willow. The shrubs that thrive in this wet area are the maleberry, the high bush blueberry, and the bayberry, and the willow. Here at the observation platform, you can sit on the bench and be still for a minute to listen for the sounds of nature. Birds, frauds, insects, wind in the grass. What else do you hear? This grassy area is mowed and there is a wide variety of trees, including dogwood, elm, and burr oaks that were planted here a few years ago. The burr oak is in the same family as the white oak we saw in the woods, so the tips of its leaves are rounded. Maybe you can come back another time to have a picnic with your family. The pollinator meadow has been planted to attract bee pollinators, butterflies, birds, bees, and bats. You can read the signs that explain what you might see in each season. Here at the boardwalk, the water that flows from the marsh on the other side of the wetland disappears into the woods. The Wampanoag people named this area Tatucket, which roughly translates to at the main tidal stream. This water goes under and around the Falmouth Mall and into Little Pond and then flows out into the ocean. If you come back for another visit, you can see jewelweed's trumpet-shaped orange flowers below the boardwalk in August. Look for hummingbirds who are attracted to its nectar. As you enter the woodland path, notice the tree off the path to the right with many burls. A tree will grow a burl in response to injury, like damage from insects or fungus. As you come out of the woods and look out 
over the park, there is a single tree on the left with branches coming out of the trunk at right angles. This tree is the latest to leaf out in the spring and the first to turn color in late summer. It is a tupelo tree, also called a black gum tree. At the outdoor classroom, you take the path back to the school. Be sure to stay to the left where the path forms. Thanks for joining us on this walking trip around Teachagate Park. We hope you'll come back and visit this special place soon.